and into the buyer intent tool. So buyer intent sits under the marketing area. You can access it directly from there. Um, and then to set it up, you first of all want to set up your total addressable market. So your target market. Um, and in this case, we're putting in the industry of um, computer software. And then we can add in some keywords to um, reduce that target market and make it a bit more tailored. So we might put accounting, project management in there. And then we've also chosen to take out CRM softwares um, for this kind of campaign. Um, we, you can then add additional information such as employee range. So if you're going mid-size, small, large, and then there are additional fields to continue to tailor, such as your company country. So say if we're running a campaign where we're going to have physical events at each of our locations, then we're going to change this target market to be looking at people who are in United Kingdom, Canada, South Africa and Japan. Um, and then you could continue to target it through revenue or other details that are important to your um, sales and marketing strategy. Then you just give it a name. And then the second part is setting up the intent. So this is looking at what have they been doing on your website. In this case, we wanted to look at people who've been um, consuming our blog content. So engaging with our knowledge pieces as opposed to the bottom of the funnel actually converting with us. So we'll set that up as one person has come at least once. And as long as your tracking code is in there, that will then generate a list of companies along with their industry, their employee range, how many people have been to your website and um, how many pages did they view, then that will populate a view that looks like this, which we'll show in the next slide what it looks like when it's fully populated. This is in our test portal, um, so it doesn't fully pull through. But there we go. So you can see in this screenshot what this looks like. So you'll have that flow of your total addressable market versus how many are engaged in uh, engage with your company and are more likely to respond if you reach out to them to give your sales team and your marketing team something to align on and produce relevant content to target them. Um, so the overview is this is that it helps you know what high fit accounts are visiting and showing intent on your website um, using reverse IP and enrichment data to capture those company profiles. Um, you set your target markets, you set your intent criteria, you set your company words to help narrow um, and tailor your target market, and then you hit go and it gives you this list of um, high fit accounts to begin to target. Um, it can also help you look at intent um, and quickly add new company records to your CRM to populate your target account tool um, and other tools that you're using in HubSpot. Um, and you can also automate actions from buyer intent. So you can trigger workflows to add companies um, and assign high fit, high, high, high fit, high intent accounts using your lead scoring, assign them to different reps in your team, taking away that manual task of analyzing your data every week based on who's come in. Um, so yeah, back over to you, Sarah. How have we been using it? How's it been helping? Yeah, so in that demo Poppy showed our test portal, um, it is live and our actual portal just didn't want uh, to show the data, but we can still speak to the actual impact and results that we've had. Uh, with buyer intent, our teams can focus on leads that show that high intent, like those repeated visits or visits from different accounts, reviewing timely and relevant content downloads. We were able to, again, consolidate our tech stack and improve our data quality. And in a recent campaign using the buyer intent feature, we set up criteria for tracking visits to our case studies pages. And when an account fits our target profile and hits the required visit threshold, our sales team got an instant notification, enabling them to jump in with highly contextualized outreach. Um, so again, super simple to set up and it just makes sure that your data um, is also a lot cleaner rather than perhaps using um, external tools. Some of the key learnings um, that we've had is with the buyer intent tool, um, we are planning to adopt it as a core part of our ABM strategy. Um, that being the caveat uh, for ourselves and for everybody else, in order to use buyer intent with any uh, paid media, you need to make sure that your retargeting audience has the right uh, volume behind it. And 
When implemented, then it will allow us to create those intent-based ads and optimize our efforts based on intent signals. So it's not just for sales. We as marketers can also use it in our um, marketing strategy. And so by leveraging this data, we can then tailor our marketing and sales messages to align with the buyer stage in that purchasing process.